Hello everybody, I'm so glad we've met. It's your boy Alfred Guatin over here and I got some nice introduction. Hello everybody, it's your boy Alfred Guatin over here and I'm so glad we've met today. So I got a requirement from a friend and I decided to build that project with you. It's going to be a Ruby on Rails API and a React front end. Um, the friend is called Kevin, and what he told me is that he is a broker. He's standing between people who sell things, right? So um, he has a lot of items. The items could be cars, houses, even minerals like gold. And all he does is that he takes those items from companies. And then once he takes those items from the companies, he just go out and advertise those products to people. And then people, when they are interested in this product, they just come in and then talk about it, and then they can decide to buy or not, right? Great. And then he wants me or us to build an application for him that he can use to manage this whole thing he's doing. So all we're going to build is like um, an e-commerce e site, but this time, Nobody's going to buy it from the website, right? Maybe we could do that in the near future, but for now, we just want to build an application where he can add the items or the product he got from the companies, and then he can show to people who visit his website, and people can just go log in, see the item they purchase, or even if they are not logging, they can see the items he's having on his website and make a decision on that, right? And I would love to do this the API with Ruby on Rails, and we are going to build the front end with React. Now, the reason why we are choosing an API and a front end framework is that he said, he told me that maybe in the near future, he may decide to add mobile application to this application. So, um, we want to make our life easier so that in the near future, if you have to make add a mobile application to this, we are not going to suffer so much. So let's see how to get up and running um, creating applications with Ruby on Rails. Now, if you've never done this before, then I'll strongly recommend you come to the Ruby on Rails documentation. Just look at the guys and then see how you can get your setup running and then everything will be good to go from there. But we are going to follow the instructions over here. And what they are saying is that um, if you've created a normal Ruby on Rails application before, it's going to be almost the same. The only thing between building a pure API with Ruby on Rails and then building normal Ruby on Rails application is that with this one, when building an API, it skips all the asset files. The um, image folder, the CSS files, the views, it, they are all skipped, right? And then the whole application made so that it can be easily Sales by other applications. Okay, so we can follow this command, and I have my terminal running here. I'm using VS Code, it's good, we can do everything with it. So the command is to tap rose new and rose new, then we, we type our app name. So the app name is going to be let's see, Kelvin, and then up uh, back end, right? We have this. And then if we want to, like Ruby on Rails provides something, let's assume that um, we want to know the configurations we can um, set up with when running our app. What we can do is that we can just tap Rails new and we add a dash H flag. And then what that will do is that it will tell us all the, the setup instructions or all the things we can follow whilst creating a new Ruby on Rails application. And then it will just give an, ex an example of how to do things, right? And this is how what they give us when we run the dash each flag. So they are seeing the, how we use it. We just tap Rails name, the app name, and then we can add options to it. And what are some of these options? Do we want to create our app from a template? We don't have one, so forget about it. Or do we want to create our app with a default database? And the beautiful thing about Ruby on Rails is that you can set it up with so many databases uh, options. For example, you can set it up with MySQL, Postgres, SQLite. These are all the options out there that we can follow, right? Good to go. But 
if you don't choose an, a database, then it is going to use the default one that comes with Ruby on Rails, that is SQLite. That's what we are seeing here. And I think we are going to do something similar. So let me do, I would like to see the into code. Like where do I want to put this from? So if you do, all right, then yeah, great. So what I would like to do is add that to tap rows, new Kelvin, um, up BG, right? And then we are going to add that dash API comp flag so that it creates an API for us. And then we saw that if we want to add a default database for our database, we will can use dash D flag and then it's equal to the database name. So we just do this, right? So let's add this guy here. And then I'm going to paste and then change the database name. We are going to use post grass QR, right? This is the database that we are going to use, right? If you want to add other options, for example, you have a CSS framework in mind that you would prefer to use, then you can come over here. Can you see this? This is that CSS, and then you can choose that option and you'll be good to go. It'll set up, if you choose Tailwind, Bootstrap, Barman, it'll set up everything for you. But because this is an API only application, um, we can skip adding CSS because CSS will by default not be added to this application. Then, uh, with real rules, too, we may need to write test. We need that. So, if you want to skip the um, test files that come with it, you can do that. You can go over the other options out here at your own free time. But for now, let's go with only this one. So, I'm going to create a rules new application. Dash dash API means that create it as an API project. I skip um, asset files. Then we are choosing the database as Postgres, right? So let's hit enter and wait for it to do everything for us, right? Whilst we are waiting, um, yeah, great. So whilst we are waiting, I'll like us to go through the app that we're going to build. So uh, what's the plan for this, right? The first thing I'll prefer to do is that I'll prefer to build a default page. Let's say the home page, right? Then show the user a message when the user goes to our website, right? Yes. I think that would be the first thing because it has nothing to do with a database, right? It has nothing to do with a database, at least to check to see if our API is running. So let's see if things get go set up, right? It's still running. Great, you got it, right? So CD into kill thing, great. And then I'm going to open this in VS Code, right? You can choose any editor that you prefer, but I'm going to run this with VS Code. And then, then you need to go away because a new VS Code is great. All right, this is the folder structure that has been created for us. We'll be spending a lot of time in the app folder, which contains the controllers, the models, and then the views. For now, the views is only going to contain the layout file, and um, we don't want to care so much about this. And then later, along the line, we'll be tapping them uh, into the config folder because it has the route, and we are so much concerned about the route, right? This is the route. And then we'll be dealing with the database too, DB file, where we are going to store all the things about migrations and seed files, right? Great. So, first of all, let me add this to Git. All right, let's see. Now, while running, now while running the git, we would like to um, know how to go about things. So, once we create a new Ruby on Rails application, before everything can work for us, we need to create a database. 
if you go to the database .yaml file, right, it, it has all um, everything for us. Yeah, can you see that this is the file database .yaml? It, it just got all the configurations for our, our database here, database name, um, everything like to set up our database correctly. And because we are seeing that we would like to use Postgres, look, it just set it up for us automatically. We don't have to worry about any other thing, right? So the first thing we like to do is that we would like to create a database. Like we register this database into a, um, a local machine, right? And then, so let's do this Rails DB create, right? And then this one will create a database. It will just see that database into a file, right? Then from there, what we are thinking of is how to create the home page, right? Or the home route. We are going to create a controller. That's going to be the first thing. We create a controller, then we give it a route, and then we test it, right? So uh, we might decide to give it some information. Great, our database has been created. Now I was complaining that I was not having the latest version of Rules installed, but don't worry, we don't care about that. For now. <laughs> you can just go with 312 version. Great. So let's go ahead and create a controller. And that controller, Rules um, G controller. Now, Rules has a lot of generators. We can generate um, a lot. If you look at this, Generate dash H, right? Great. So the real G, um, this is so beautiful about rules. Whatever you're doing, if you get lost, just add a dash H flag to there, and then it will show you everything that I think that you can do, right? So, what can we generate? So, real generate. We add whatever we like to generate, right? So we can generate, look at all these. We can generate um, a controller, a job, mailbox, migration, model, resource, calf. Well, this is a whole lot, right? So if you get lost, right, you can even generate a tax. And then talk about testing. We can generate all forms of testing, all types of testing over here, right? So for now, what are we going to generate? We are going to generate a controller. Right, and even with that controller, let's look at what Rails has for us. So Rails G controller, right? We know that we are going to generate a controller, but let's assume I don't know what I have to provide to it. I can add a dash H flag again, and then let's see what it tells us. So it is going to tell us when we are creating a controller, like what do we need to do? This is powerful. Rules is so great. So we are seeing that how do we use it? We say rules generate the controller, the controller name. Then we add the actions, right? We add the actions and then the options. We attach the option to it. So let's look at an example over here. Then we can go about add all the options that we will prefer to it. Do we want to skip some route file? Do we want to add some helper methods? Don't worry. Let's look at an example here. Look. They give us the example here, Ray. And the example is that we do real generate the controller. Then look, this is plural, plural, right? The controller is always going to start with the uppercase letter and it should be plural, right? Then we add the actions, right? So 
let's do something similar. So we're going to say Rails generate or G, the shortcut to it, and then controller. And then the controller is going to be, let's say, homes. Look, start with an uppercase, end with an S, right? And what action do we want? We just want the, um, the index route. We just want to have a route for the default, like route, like um, the um, index page, right? So that we can show the user something when this user go to our page. Like it creates, can you see this? It creates a controller for us, it add a route, and it generates some test files. Don't worry about the testing, we'll focus on that later. But let's go to the homes controller. In gray, this is the controller, the homes controller that was generated for us, right? This is powerful. It was all coming from the rules generate command. And then if we were using um we were going with a normal rules application, right? Then we should this route, there should be some views file associated with it that we are going to render but this time we are only going to render json our whole application because this is an api only app so what do we do in the home route i would like to say that when someone hit this route right sorry this controller all we do is that we like to render some json and what is going to be that json we like to render a message let's see message great okay. And what message should we tell people? Welcome to all right. No, I'm gonna get this is great. Yay! Welcome to application. It's good to see you here, all right? Yeah. Anyone who comes to application would love to see that person. And yeah, <laughs> this is great. So let's see. If, and then once we have the controller, there should be a route associated with this one, right? And then I think if this guy is just going to the next line, we can do something like this. So that at least for clean code, right? I don't care about this one. Great. And then we got this one. My VS Code has started misbehaving, so I'm just trying to format this guy here cleanly, but it's not good, so I'm sorry about that. All right, so let me go to the route. Um, this is the route file, and then great. Now we are looking for the root route, and initially, um, because we generated a controller, the route is saying that when we go, we go to Homes slash the index route. Oh, look at the index route I created. <laughs> it's there. Right, we don't want dev, right? Let's go to the controller. Right? And then dev is, we, don't, we just want uh, index. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. We just want index, right? The route should be index. And then when we go to the, um, the controller, we are just looking for an index route, right? So all we do is that, we are going to modify this example here and we see homes then index should be our index route and this is all we need to do let's try testing this to see now you can when testing this application you can go with postman right or any api client that you can use to test your application but in vs code there's um, an extension called tender tender client and it allows us to just test our whole application without any problems, right? So let's assume that I created some of these things here, but let's assume I create a new request. This is how we use Tender. Um, it just behaves like Postman if you've used it before. So you have all the controller, I'm uh, sorry, all the HTTP verbs here that we can run. Then we can add um, application like the um, route that we are going to hit over here. So. It's going to be HTTP, like, I'm sorry, um, I'm bad, I'm bad at this, sorry. You just need to tell me the correct route that we are talking about. Oh, we've not even run application, so rules extra. I'm sorry, I need to run application first.
Great, so the route that we're going to hit, yeah, it's going to be this route. Look out for 3,000, right? Let me copy that and then. Great. Great. So this is the route that we are going to hit. It's going to be a get request, right? And then let's hit it and see if we get a correct response that we set when someone should hit our default route. Sorry, I. Um, roots route, right? Hey, welcome to application. It's good to see you here. We got the message that we're looking for, right? This is awesome, right? So thank you for being here with me. I, I think you enjoy it. We are able to create our first route, right? It's interesting. Thank you, right? But I think you can see that, well, we can do a lot. We can do a lot. So let's look at what else we can do. First of all, um, let me add some good message here. At least when I put this one, uh, root, uh, right? This is it. And then you could have been given a better message. I'm sorry. <sighs> this is bad. So the, the next thing that we like to do is that you know this application is going to have some form of authentication, some user interactions, right? So what we would like to do is that uh, let's first add the authentication system to it before we even go ahead with creating this car force because if you, we are to create let's say a product a product will be created by some human being some user right we like to know that user who created a product and then if someone is to make an order right it's going to come from a user right so let's add the authentication system before we even jump to um, adding the controllers right and there's a beautiful thing about rails and it comes with a full-fledged authentication system called device and device just help you to um, authenticate your application give you a lot a lot of proper functions that we can use when authentication are users in fact you can even add um, login with um omni auth so login with google facebook github api you can do all of these when you're using device gen. right great but um this is an api normally if you are using this um the normal um, Ruby on Rose application, if you're coding that application, then um, what happens is that we are going to authenticate our users using sessions, right? Sessions. But if we are to authenticate our users in an API, then we need to generate some JSON web tokens, right? And then if those tokens exist, then it means that the user is authenticated. But if the token get expired, then the user is unauthenticated. So we need another gem, and there's another gem called device JWT, right? Um, let me see if I'm gonna see it. All right, so the gem is called device JWT gem. Let's go to GitHub for that. Right. Great, so um, device JWT is here. So it just device JW3 just is just a full uh, Ruby application and it just help us to know like do you remember what we did? We created an application, then from there they are telling us all the things that we need to run, right? We need to run and then that will help us to generate like do this Rose application correctly, right? This I don't think this is the official one. <laughs> this um the device JWT tutorial guide. From someone, but there's a device JWT guide um, that we can follow. So we are going to follow this um, GitHub page. But when reading around it, I think I've seen an updated one just before recording this. And then they are he's saying that hey, he did the original recording in 2020, 20, but now in 2023 he has updated it. Thank you, Martinez. 
you did a great job right we love your job we love your job so let's follow martinez and see what he's saying we should do so that we set up application with the vibes and jwt we are going to modif um, do some modification to what he has here um, yeah but for now we are good to go with what he's saying so the first thing he's saying we should do is that we should add course he's saying that we just uncomment this line and why um, let me go to general file course stands for cross origin resource um sharing right so course allow applications let's say there's an api different um, apps can tap into and um, just access the data from this application that is the work of course but if we there's no course or cross origin resource sharing policy then different apps cannot share um tap into different applications and get the data data and this since this is an api we just want applications to be able to assess this guy here so we have to uncomment this line that's the first part and then we run bundle install and then he's saying that there's a course for here right and then they we need to just copy this and then put it there right so um let me copy this guy here then we go to course all right and then this is the line but this line is what he's seeing that he's updated it right i would like to copy and paste or if you like i can paste this guy down here and you see that he's made some modifications over here the route name whatever whatever but but the route name because of 3000 is good to go but in production we like to add um uh url here great but if we want this app to be assessed by anything any application then we can put a star here right star means that anyone can tap into this right i like to go with it because this in development mode and then he add the expose what are we exposing we are exposing access token yeah this is so great because initially when i was testing this app the access token was not exposed and i was getting errors the authorization was also not exposed i was getting errors but he updated a tutorial he made this so nicely we love you martinez so much thank you so we gotta go save this guy here and what else do we need let's go to martinez again and see what he's saying we should do and then from here like he said that the authorization is just going to give us the auth token right and then we can assess it using uh, response dot headers dot get authorization right you don't need to worry about that right then we need to add the needed gems device for authentication device jwt to bring us the jwt web token that comes with device and json api um serializer at least we can um especially tell rails when rendering the json data what should we render right you get that Let's assume that we are rendering a user data, right? If we don't use any serializer, we'll just take all the information about the user out. We don't want that. Serializers help us to tell the US application, what should you render on the screen, right? So let's just copy this guy here into a uh, gem file, right? And then we go to gem file. Great, I would like to put it here, okay, there it is, great. And then we do bundle install. Let's bundle this. Let's bundle this guy. I'm gonna open this guy here. Now I need to stop the server because anytime you add something into your gem file, you need to restart your server, right? Because if you don't restart it, the server will not be able to use it automatically. So anytime you add something to your gem file, remember to restart your server, right? So let's do bundle. Bundle, my bad. All right, you can do bundle install or bundle I or bundle. Great, and then we have now. Oh God, my goodness. Um, you know, this guy, Arvin, use three one two. Right, it just complained about the root version that I'm using. I don't know. Initially, it's two six zero. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like to use two six zero. Okay. Okay, so let's use bundle. Check, 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 check. 
and then it's just going to run its thing. Forget about it. Let's go ahead. The next one is that these instructions are just just come with device, right? We need to run Rails generate device install to set up device and application, right? So let's work for it to finish, and then by just following this command, uh, we'll be good to go to this uh, run our app, right? right? Cool. Oh. Right, and then we do real generate device install. Remember, I'm just following the documentation. I'm just following the documentation. I just want to know, let you know where I copy them from. I can memorize them, just copy and paste. And I'm hey, don't worry, let's do this together. This is going to generate um setup file for us to run device. Just the setup, so some configurations file for us. So it created device.rb file and it contains the um, the configurations for device, and then this is going to con contain the messages right that we can run. But there's something the instruction is telling us to run. In the instruction is saying that we should go to config environment.rb and then just copy this guy here the, over there, right. And then from there, we should set a root route. Well, we, we have that already, but it's just not recommended for API only application. I just decided to do that. And then if we were using uh, the normal uh, Ruby on Rails application, then we have to set error messages, right? But it is not required for API only applications. This one is not required. So within the four instructions, the only one required is to set up these guys. Yeah? Um, we've opened that. Great, and then let's put it somewhere here. All right, so let me see. This is the rise, all right? Great, I posted I pasted there. Good to go. Sometimes VS could just decide to stress me out, right? Great. That was the instruction. Now if we are going production, let's assume we are hosting this application online. Then we need to do something similar in the environment. Now if you go to the environment file like config, there's the development and then there's the production file. So if we are going production, you are going production, then remember to come over here, like copy the same line, go into the production file, right? So just environment, and then environment has development and production. So just go into the production file, do something similar, but within the host, make sure it's the host, like your URL address over there, so that um, uh, it can be used to send um, like error messages, it can be used to change email address, password configurations. This is just you setting up action mailer in the device. Just so great. Okay, let's go to the next instruction. Yeah, we've done this. And then they are seeing that the next one is to go to device.rb here, and then just make sure that we uncomment the following line. Can you see this? Let's go here. So, now you can see that when searching files, I'm just not um go into the file one by one not always but i'm just using this if you lost it just control p on windows it just open this um dialog for you where you can just search the file name for example if you are searching for gem file just start start typing the app name then it will pull up right but if you prefer that one too you can just go here and you can go here, just try finding the app one by one, which is a lot of work, right? So we would like to go with this one. Mm. Okay, so where did they say we should go? So we need to go to um, device.rb file.
Okay, so we go device.rb file. Cool. And then they said that we should uncomment this line. We should uncomment this line, right? So, how do we find that? All right, I like to just check this navigational format and then try to find it here. Great, this is that file. So, let's try uncommenting it and then we just need to um, put star star, whatever. So, let's see. It's important to set an application format to an empty, to empty in the generated device by commenting this line in the API. So we need to set it empty, right? So let's take away these guys here. This is documentation, so no need to worry about why it is set. We set up empty. <laughs> All right. All right. From there, we need to generate our user model. And then how do we generate the user model? This is just command, the command real g device user this one is going to generate a, a model a user model that's number one and then that we can use to like, save the um, user into the application still um, trying to add the authentication system to the application all right now if you come here right they are just saying that we should do real db migrate, which is fine. But if we look into our application, a user or a customer is having name and address, name, address, name, address, and I prefer to add it automatically. I don't want to go back and come add the um, add to the um, go come add to the uh, model, right? So let's add name and then address to the model. The, um, uh, when we run this um, device migration here, which is here. Cool. So if you look at the migration, what was generated for us is um, email password, then reset password, um, reset password syntax, all these ones, right? But we'd like to add um, some stuff to it. For example, name and address, right? So I can come here. All right. So let me see. Um, strong parents, right? That's how device call it. Call it strong parents, right? And what are those strong parents we like to add? Uh, we like to add. All right, so like to add t the um, string, and then it's going to be name. And we like to make sure that when someone is creating a user, that person do not skip adding names. So let's say now it's set to false, right? Great. And then we like to do the same thing, but for address. So let's say address, right? Great. And the last thing that we like to add is that there should be user roles, right? There should be user roles. So let me add that here too. So we would like to use numbers um, or integers to store the role. So if someone has um, the role zero, that person is going to be a user, right? If the role is one, then we see that person is going to be an admin, right? Great. So and this is going to just migrate and add this to the database for us right so let's continue um, the next instruction is to generate two controllers 
one for the sessions controller and the other one for registrations. And these are going to manage user login, logout, um, then signing up user. So let's copy this guy here and let's do this right. Great. And after that, they are saying that we should specify that we are going to generate JSON response. We are going to do that later, don't worry. But from here, I think according to this instruction, there's something we should do. They are saying that we should ensure that route.rb file has been set up correctly. And then um, this guy is saying that, hey, we can update the route. Like, instead of just seeing that sign in, go to login, sign out, go to log out, then the controllers, we could even specify the path name, right? Right. So let's go to browse, right? And then instead of device for users only, let's just add this guy here. Cool. And then for the path, I like to just add API slash um, auth story. It means that when we want to go to the login, it's going to be slash API slash auth slash login. It's just my personal preference. When we want to go to the sign out, this where we go. I just added this, and then when we want to go to sign up, this is what we do. So I just want to update the path so that at least when working with the React front end, at least there can be some difference. Um, so what, right? And from here, I think we need to con um, configure device JWT, right? That's the next instruction. And they are saying that we need to just copy this file and go to the device or RB file, right? So control P, uh, device the RB file, then we should paste this somewhere, right? I'll prefer to paste it beneath this place. All right, so let's paste it here. And then. Great, so all we are seeing is that we are setting JWT secret, right? This is going to be the JWT secret. It's just going to pick the Rails uh, master key, like the secret key, and use it as a secret. Then we are going to send a push request to log in, a delay request to log out, right? This is just going to manage the sessions for us, right? And then the next instruction is to, um, yeah, you can read a lot about this, but we need to generate some GTI, right? And they explain what GTI is. It's just some revocation strategy, right? That is used to check who is logging in that. Right. So let's do this. We generate this. Um, we add this to the users. Right? Real G my, uh, migration, this, the, this guy. And then from there, they are saying that we have to make sure that null is set to false to the column line and then unique is set to true. So just as this guy here has been set, we need to update what they give us. Great. Right. So null should be set to. So for the first one, they are saying that uh, null should be set to false. Yeah. And then for the other one, to unique should be set to true. Oh, you don't have to do anything to it. It means that no two users can share the same thing, right? And then the next part is to um, add this into a user model. So the user model, and we update the whole content of the user model, right? So instead of what comes with device, like um, from device by default, we should update this to use the JWT revocation strategy to the GTI matcher we just created, right? That's just what we are doing. And you can run world db migrate, right? But before that, yeah, why not? Rose db migrate. And then from there, we need to, um, for the user data that will be coming, we can use serializer to just check and then send the correct uh, user data um, when uh, user is created, right? So we also need to do this. We are generating a serializer. Remember, we added a JSON serializer to this, and then we are just going to generate this serializer, right? The serializer is just saying that when we want to know who is logging, the user that's logging, we should just call the attribute 
ID email than the created app. And these are these ones are just the ones who's going to be sent. We are not going to send. Uh, we can even send um, the name since we have right. Yeah, to it, and then we don't have to worry about this. Right, and this is what has been generated for us. And um, there's a lot. You don't care. The next one is to um, um, have the, re the registrations controller and then the sessions controller with this data, right? So let's go to the registrations controller. Do you remember where it is? We generated it inside users registrations. And this is the by default one that comes to true. So let me just um, update it with this one. And all we are saying is that um, when user is signing, like this is registration. So when user is registered successfully, then we say sign up successful. Else, what do we do? We say user serializer, then we send the user data, right? If the user could not be generated, like could not be created, then we tell the user the message. The same thing for the um, sessions to manage the um, login, logout thing. So, right. and then let's go to sessions and then let's just update this guy here. Great. This one is also saying that when user login, let's say, hey, log out, login successful, right? And then if you log out, log out successful, then if someone is trying to log in and the person's details cannot be found, found, then we say, hey, we can't find your data, right? Okay, we don't care about this, we don't care about this, we don't care about this. And they are saying that we should test our application. But when we test it, we are going to face some errors, right? And then um, there's, he's saying that there's some fixes we need to do, right? And then they are, they are saying that to implement this fix, um, we go to, um, we go and generate this guy here, and then we include it, All right. All right? I think I'll prefer to do this before I go to the next part, before we even test this. So they're saying that, um, what do we do? So to implement this fix, create a new file in app controllers. So this is what we are going to create. Controllers concern, then rack session fix.rv. So I'm going to create this file inside the app. Cool, so this is concerns and then rack fix. Yeah, there's a file and we're just going to add this guy. Great, so um, it's just going to fix the error that comes with, um, as he's saying that there was an error, internal server error, and then the session is disabled, right? And then this is just going to fix the error. And then once we had, we've done that, we go to the um, sessions controller and update it. So sessions and then the registrations controller, we just want to go here. And then, oops. Yes, we have second integration again. And then the registrations controller, we do the same thing. Cool. And then we are good to go. We are good to go. And then now we can test the application to see if everything is working successfully. But there's one thing I'd like to show you. That is, do you remember that when we were creating the user model? Um, let me go show you the user model that we created. Um, I, I made some changes, so we need to fix that before we... Yeah, when we were creating the user model, we said that when we are creating a new user, we don't want the name and the address field to be empty. We just want people to enter their name and then the address. So we have to configure this one too so that we don't show an error. And then how do we do that? Now, when we go to the device documentation, there's something called strong params, right? This is it. And then the strong params is saying that uh, by default, when we are signing in users, it comes in with email and password. When we are signing up, it's just email, password, and password confirmation. But 
if we want to add some additional features, right, we use the um, strong params and they are just given two examples over here. Let's just copy one of them and then uh, go modify it. So they are saying that we should go to the application controller and then make some changes over there. Application controller and then inside this place, we just have to add this. And then we add the strong parameters we are expecting. So before action, we configure permitted params. And then for sign up, what do we want to permit? We want to permit the name, that's what we said, and then the address, all right? And this means that when we are sign up user, we can pass in those uh, parameters, right? And then it will be added to the user's data. If you don't do this and you sign up, you provide some additional uh, parameters aside from the email password, it is going to blow up through an error here. Great, right. okay, so this is the fix that we need to do. Mm -hmm. I think after this, we are good to go. Let's test the application to see what is happening. So, first of all, we like to Rails um, server and then we like to test the application, right? So, let's try and um, Let's come here. Great, so API of login. No, I don't just want login, I just want. Now to know the route in your application, you can go to localhost 3000, then slash whatever your port is, then slash rules info, then route. Rules slash info, then slash route, right? And it is going to show you all the like, routes in your application, where they route to. So for us, we are going to use say user registration and we are sending a push request. So look, they are saying that when we want to use a registration path, the push request goes to slash API slash org slash sign up. And this is what we are looking for. And it's going to slash sign up. And do you remember what we said we're going to create a user with? It's going to be email, password, and let's see, name. Let's see. And then let's see address, right? And then you can see America, right? Anita is in America, right? So let's hit like post to this guy and see what response we have. Now, this is the first time we are going to boom, we got it, right? We got it. We just tested our part up, and then this is what was created. Now, if you were in, where is this data coming from? Remember, it is coming from the um, user serializer that we created. Do you remember this? This is where this data is coming from. And then after registrations, we are sending this data here. So if you want, you don't want to send this data, then you can take it away, right? Yeah, but um, this is what the data we are sending. And let's see if we are getting the bearer token. Yay, can you see this? We are getting the bearer token over here. Right. It means that the registration is successful. We've been able to register users in application. Good job, All right? Then let's test um, login users to, to see if it works. So login to goes to, let's see, login, login, login. Yeah, login goes to API of login. Now the route is maybe different based on how you set up your route. So don't worry about this. Memorizing this is just about keeping things in your head. So, before we do that, I like to log out first so that I like to. It's just this guy. Yeah, it will see this, but <laughs> it's just, I'll just try and uh, figure out how I can fix this error for us. So the login should go to, um, we just send an email password to this. And remember, we are already having, we are already having the user created, and look, the response is successful. Lord, mm, successful, good job, thank you. I think it, it was enjoyable, we were able to do this and then we've been able to successfully create a user, like model, um, model register user, then save the user into our database correctly. And thanks to um, this guy, yeah, thanks to him so much, we love him, Martinez. Uh, what's the name? Lee Martinez, he, he's done so well and we love him. So you can refer to his documentation while creating users with JW team and then device. 
and it is just going to do all the get big job for you. Right. Thank you. All right. The next part of this application is to um, now that we have this, let me add a commit message to this guy. So, Vision. All right. I'm sorry for the messages being so short. It's just tutorial. So, okay. All right. So, perfect. So, we have the user registrations done. Let's look at the app that we are working on. So, the next part of this whole thing is to start generating the um, working on the entities that we are going to use in application. And then, let's start from here. So, Kevin told me that he take the cars, the product from companies, right? And a company has a name, right? So, let's we are going to use the scar food to do this. So, let me quit the server, and then. We are going to generate star foods to do this job. We don't want to worry so much about a lot. <laughs> we can talk about it. For now, let's go with star foods. So, rose, these star food. And if you are worried about what that star food has for me when I generate uh, rules, um, when I generate things with it, you can just add a dash each flag to it. And it's just going to tell you all the things that you can do. How should you, what name should you give? Like, should it be prize or what? What foods can you provide? And then it just gives you all the things that you need to do. But the example is here. They are saying that we should generate a scaffold, then add the fields and the field types to it. And then even if we want uniqueness to be there, whatever, we can add that. So I'll, I'll prefer this guy here. Yeah? So let's see, reels, G scaffold. And the scaffold name, first of all, we want to generate come. Penny, look, it's singular, and it starts with a uh, lowercase letter. Company, the company is going to have a name, and that's what Kelvin said to me. That's name, and then we would like it to be like this guy here. So, email, unique, whatever. So, company, the name is going to be string, and then we are going to make it unique. Right, unique. It means that the company name should be unique. All right, so let's try generating a new scaffold for company. Cray, the scaffold has been generated successfully. And let's look at what was generated for us. So we got um, a table created for company. I think, yay, we added a unique index to it. It means that no two companies can have the same name. So let's say we add um no it's set to false because we don't want people to generate empty company names and then it also added the uh, router.db file to this and then i um, think we can update that and we can add validations to it and see that people cannot just add um, um People cannot just come in and add empty um, companies, right? So, uh, um, all right. So, you see, validate. Um, All right, so we see validate, and then what are we validating? We are going to validate um, name, and then we see that um, presence is set to true. Then uniqueness, uniqueness to is 
to be set to uniqueness. Yay! Should be said to sure. I don't know if I'm correct, but uniqueness should be there. Right? U N I uniqueness. Perfect. So if you are concerned about any of these validations, then I think you can check the real um, guide to see what they have for us. So anytime someone is creating a company, we just want to make sure that the name is unique and things like that. Right? Then you can go ahead and add um, the commit message, right? All right, the next thing is to generate, um, like each product also has a category because he, he told me that he could be selling cars, um, he could be selling houses, he could be selling motorcycles, it's a whole lot. So we need to create a um, category also. I'm going to just um, call the category also. And it should just be the same thing. Just a name, category. Great. Category 2 is having the same, like, just one name, a name. That's going to be the category. And I think um, we are, we've been given the name and then like to do no. It's set to false, and then when we go to the um, the model, I think we can do this um, thing about um, VS Code sometimes can do about right. Okay, so um, go to category. Yeah, then we can, I think we can just copy and paste this guy here. Now after um, doing all this, we are going to test to see if it works fine. So don't worry about testing for now. We are going to test after we add all the um, the things and then we can keep making changes necessary changes right so this one to is category we've added that all right and then from there I think you can see that we are now going to item or the product itself I like to call it product right and a product belongs to a company it belongs to the category that we created. It has a name and a price. And we like to add image description to it so that at least um, uh, people can know what that product is all about. So, so let's say reels this car full. We call that product. And it's going to, um, number one, belongs to category. So let's say category references, right? And then it means that there's going to be a category ID in the product, right? And then company references, right? And then a category is um, a product is going to have a name, it's going to have a price, that is of type flow, great. And then it's going to have a description, that is of type text. And it's going to have an image, that is of type string, we don't care, great. So, and then so we have category um it belongs to product belongs to category company name price i think that, that's all that's all. all right then let's add some of the validation we just want to make sure that name um can be now all right so now let's say to false then the same thing for price. We don't want you to add a product without a price and a, a description, right? And the same way for image, like you don't want to skip that. You just want to enforce that people do this, right? And then we can do the same thing inside the uh, model so that at least we can make sure that we're not just taking from one end, but we are taking from other end. So I think I can do my copy and paste job again. All right, so we go to product and then yeah, 
the relationship that belongs to relationship has already been set. So we like to validate the name, presence, unique. Um, for product, uniqueness is not going to be set. You can add the same product here. I don't care. Then there's going to be price. Price. And then what else? Description. We would like to. Um, the description. Then the last one is image. I am using it, right? Uh, yeah. So they are going to be present. They are going to be true. And then for now, yeah, I like it. But then sometimes we can add some additional like um, checks. For example, for the name, yeah, they should be there. But what should be the length, right? So we can add something like L E N G length, and then we can specify like is there going to be some um, minimum, right? Minimum, and then what should be the minimum? Let's say that the minimum is going to be three, right? And for the maximum, don't let us worry so much about that. And um, I think we we download this one, so length has been added. And then for the price too, I think there's something we can add to the price here. When we go to the, let's go to rules validation. All right, model validation. Right. Let's see. So. Let's check all the things that, um, for now, we would like to, there's numeracy, um, yes. inclusion, exclusion, format, whatever, whatever. So I think uh, we can go numeracy and they say that um, the, the name can be only numbers, right? And let's see price. I've never validated the price before, but um, let me see. Right. How to validate price field is model, right? I don't know. Let's do this. All right, so uh, all right, Stack Overflow. Let's see if Stack Overflow has a solution for us. All right, and then they are seeing that presence through format Yee! is price is of type decimal, and then precision is each skill is two price of type. Uh, the format is just going to be numeracy greater than zero. Oh, great, I love this one, right? So, presence true, and then I think uh, let me just copy this one. All right, so our price is going to be. Something like this. Okay. We validate price, presence true. The format is just going to be um, the numeracy format, and then um, it's going to be from zero to hundred thousand. Yay! What if someone go crazy and want to buy something more than hundred thousand? I don't know. All right, for now, let's just do it that. So just uh, one, two, three. Just for readability. All right, great. So from zero to this, and then that's price for you. And then for the description too, we can add this minimum three. We don't care about the maximum. And then for the image, don't worry about this, right? So these are just the validations that we like to add to this. To make sure that the schema behavior is effective, right? <sighs> okay. Why are you throwing it up? Yeah, they are responding. Right? Then uh, let me close all. Perfect. And then the last thing we like to work on is that. Uh, oh, sorry. Great picture. The last thing we like to work on is that. I think we have to work on the user. So the last thing is going to be the order where user can order some product, right? Right. And then after that, we can check. So rules G scaffold order. And then order is going to have um, the product, right? Product is left here yes right and then who orders like the item so user reference right so it's just going to have the user id the user who is ordering the item and then the specific item that's being ordered right and this is what we are just concerned about right
and I think for that um, the uh, I think the null force has been set and then when we go to the product great I think all that sorry great it has already been set up here right so I think that's all for um, company category item order customer everything has been created successfully right I like to do the um, relationships before I run the migration right because we've added the belongs to belongs to but then we've not added the has many so how do we go about it so we can see that a user has many orders right so we can check the orders a user has and then My thing is a bit slow, so um, right. so you can't just okay. Asia is going to have many orders, right? And then what we see is that dependence should be destroyed. Means that when we destroy the user destroy his order, right? And then we can go ahead and do different things. For example, when we destroy the user, what should we do to the orders that were created by the user? We don't care about this too much, right? So, and then let's go to product. And then remember product, we said that it belongs to category and company. Product belongs to category and company, right? It means that the company is going to have many products. Category two is going to have many products. So let's go over here. And then we can add this thing. All right, VS Goods just giving me issues. Hmm. All right, so company has many product right and then the same thing for category right cool now it is something like great so we are done and then from there the next part is that i think uh, company has many product um category has many product and then product has many orders right let's add that product has many orders um, how many people have ordered that pro product? You can check and to see. So it has many orders, right? Cool. I think that's that's it. And then, yeah, looking at this diagram, user has many orders. Company has many items. Yeah, and then order. Um, has many product or oh, um, all that belongs to a product, right? We've done that. Great. So we are good to go. We've set up all the uh, scaffolds for application very right? um, in no time. And then let's run reels DB my great. Now I did all this because I know what I'm doing. Right? <laughs> you don't have to worry so much about this, right? Great. We've created all the things in the model database and then we are good to go from it. Cool, we've added all the relationships and then the next thing to do is that we would like to test the application to see if everything is running fine. So first, let me, um, um, this right, I don't care about this guy. Cool, so how do we um, go ahead and then how do we make sure that we test this whole application? How do we get the data? And we could manually create the data one by one. We could go and say, okay, let's create a company. We could create five companies. Let's create this, we create this, let's create that. We, we keep creating that. But I think you can know that it is going to be a lot of work, right? It's going to be a lot of work. That's why there's a gem called Fika. Fika, it is fake. <laughs> All right, so it's not going to be fake to you. It's going to be real, but it is going to generate fake data for you, fake data. It, it just helps you to generate data um, for your whole Ruby and Rose application. Right? So all they are seeing is that, just go ahead, add this to your gem file. All right. 
So gem file, then we go and add fake cat. Now I'm not organizing my gem file because if we have to go to production, there are some files, there are some of these, we have to put them in the development file. Some of them need to go to the test and some of them have to like, we need to know where to put the gem, like the gems, right? But later we can do that. Okay, just gem data stuff. Let's do bundle, right? And then from bundle, they are saying that if we want a name, if you've never used the gem before, what they are saying is that if you want to generate a name, all you do is that you just say, hey, Faker, give me the name, like there's a class called name, and then a name in that right class. Now, if you want to know where those classes are, just come here. You see, there's default. When you click default, it just lists like there's Faker addresses, which help you to generate addresses like by Faker. Let's look at the address that will be generated for us. If you look at the address, it's going to say that, hey, we have address, we have city, street, street address, whatever. And then these are the examples that we can get when we use the Faker gem, right? This is an example. And one beautiful thing is, is that whenever you run the like Faker gem thing, you ask it to create a data. It will create different like set of data. It will create different set of data, which is so cool. And we can use it. And then where do we write this? We write it in the seed file. Like seed is just where, according to this file, it's just where we put data that we would like to put into our database, right? We could do that with a um, um, rows console. That's what we normally use. But then when using the rows console, I think uh, it's a bit tedious. Like you have to go through all these two, right? And then sometimes when we, we want to reuse that data that was created, it's going to be hard, right? So it's better to use the seed file. Okay? And I think they are giving us an example here. And they are saying that, hey, we can generate movies. And then the movie is going to have a name, whatever. And then we can just go ahead and then just whenever we run it, just go and then create all this for us. Right? But for now, um, we are going to create our own thing, right? Now, when I was preparing this course, I did some things here. I just created this because it's going to take some while, for a while to create all this data. So um, let me explain what I've done here. So I'm saying that I'm going to generate, um, let me add a address here because the user has, should have a address. Let me see. Ficker address is address the city name. Address the what? Address the what? Address the what? Okay, let's go address full address, right? For a user. Address. Cool. So all I'm seeing is that we are we want to generate 30 users. 30 users. And those 30 users just give me email addresses, right? And this password, I like the password to be something specific that I can use. So let's see secret. It means that I what well, I'm just doing this because I like to know the password so that I can test it all day. And then um, from here, um, so email password name. Yeah, can you see this? And then when we are generating a company tool, we have company. We just going to create five companies. Five. And then the category, right? This is the category. Let me show you what I've done. You know, Kelvin want the category to be specific. We don't want to allow um, Ficker to generate just some random data for us that we don't know about. So we are going to make this a drop down in the React font and so that users can select the category. So the category is going to be just diamond, car, motor, gold, and then I think houses, right? It's just house, oh, right? Great. So those are the categories that people can select from. Great. And then we are creating product, 20 product. We are giving each product a name, price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we are creating orders, right? Orders, 70 orders. And then there's um, something interesting here, um, how I'm generating the relationship. For example, if um, product has a category, I'm just saying that product, just go to the product and we don't know the product, just give me one ID from the product. So you just pick an ID from the product and insert it here. So if you want to create an order, it's made by who, right? 
and this is so beautiful, all right? So these are the data that I'm generating. If you need to read more about it, you can go to the Fika documentation, read about this, or you can go to the real um, documentation, read about C file, and you're good to go from there, right? All right, so let's see um, what happened. How to see that data, we just run rows db seed, right? And then if there are any errors, the app will just crash, like seed will crash. But if there are no errors, it will just return nothing. It means that we've seeded all that data into our database without any problems, right? Let's wait and see. It's going to take a while because I'm generating so much data, 70, 80. Yay! Company. Company. Uninitialized content. Company. All right? Company. Do you mean company? Oh my goodness. When I was spelling company in the model, I made a mistake. So, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> All right. Should I do this or should I go into the model and change the company name. Oh, sorry. And then, then wherever we are using company, we need to change it, right? Oh my goodness. Then the best way to do is to just um, change um, the scaffolding, right? So that at least we don't make a mistake here. That's just going to be this one. Let me see. Um, those are two change uh, model name. Name, yeah. I think it's just the style for how uh, to change uh, uh, name. Let's see if there's an option that I've never tried that before. Uh, is there a built in uh, way to rename a style for Let's see. I don't think there's any in Rails, right? I respect this scaffold, and then we just do it again. Oh my God! I don't think there's a real a way. This typo is going to do a lot to us, right? <gasps> don't worry. Um, later we can. <laughs> so sorry. Let me check the. Uh, migration to see what I did. That's probably this more. So schema. Let me see if the those um, errors appeared in the. Then we can know how to handle it. Right. The problem is with a company CE as a company, but let's go to a product and then you see. Oh right, it just. Company, that's what I did. Company, not company. Company, so we don't have to worry about it. We're just going to make a typo, etc. And then product as a company. Right? Okay, so let's go to the C file again. I'm so sorry for that typo. Um, I can't do anything about it. Uh, so it's going to be company. So C A. Alright, right, so then we can do the same thing for okay. Let's see them. You know, I've already generated 30 users, right? So I'm not like to generate 30 more users again. So I like to comment this out. If you don't comment it out, it will generate, it will repeat everything like inside that model, right? So right. let's see if they are in here. Okay. Okay. So this is going to take a while. We are seeding data into application and that data can be used for testing and then even if we connect our React front end, we can use the data that we are generating to test to make sure that everything is working as expected. Right? Great. So um, let's see. Great, we got all that data seeded into a database, and then 
we are good to go. Alright, so let me uncomment this later. We're gonna do set so point, and then I'm going to um, close all, right? Close all, right? And then now it's time to test, right? So let's try to see if um, we can get all the data right, from out there, right? So first of all, I think we've seen product here. So look out for three thousand like product. Great, so this is all there is, right? <laughs> and uh, so, so let's check for product and then let's see. Um, oh, it's not on the server, it's just, all right. Great, the app is running successfully so and the next thing we do is to just check to see if um, we're able to get the product like yay can you see this we are generating we are getting so many orders we are getting so many orders oh, okay all right we are getting orders or category id whatever let's go with slash one and this is the work of that Careful. It just helps us to get all the data from the database without problems. And then let's see, come okay, these, and then let me check for the first company. Great, we have the company. We have categories. Let's check for the first category out there. Good. And then we have all this. I think we've checked all this here. And then let's see. Great, we got everything up and running successfully, right? This is awesome. This is awesome. But I think you could see that for the order, we are getting the um, user ID, product ID. Sometimes you like to know what is the order about. We don't want the ID. We just want the data, right? So how do we get the data from the order, right? There are several ways. There are several ways we could do this. Yeah, there are several ways. But uh, for simplicity, we could go with like using the um, J Builder, J Builder to know like generate serialized data for us, right? That J Builder is one, or we could use some serializer gems out there to do this. But for simplicity, I'll just go to the rules console. For example, let's talk about all this, and then um, let me go to the all this. Um, all this controller cool so let me go first to the all this controller and then the order remember that we said that that order is having um, order has a product and then the user so what we can do is that we can go ahead and include the user and then the product inside the um the the data we are sending to the user and how do we do that we just go to where we are rendering the data and then we just add the dot include right in include i'm um, sorry order the to json uh -huh. so order the to json and then we say include what do we want to include the other has um, a user because other come from a user and we like to include also the product right uh, let me do the same thing for the um, single order right let's check to see if this is working fine so we are just including the user and then the product inside it so whilst loading that and then let's try to check if it is working so initially this was the order we we're just coming with the product ID and the user ID but Let's try checking this to see if it only comes with a product ID and the user ID.
Yay, this is working nicely. Can you see that? The other, the user who ordered the team and then the product has been added to the order. This is so cool. It means that we can tap into the order, right? The product, the price, everything with no problem. Right? This is order. Then we can do the same thing for all the other um, things that we are arranging on the screen. We can add the relationship. Let's do this for product. I think product is so close here. And, um, my VS code is using sometimes, so I'm so sorry. And then we just want to include, right? Include product. We say the product in, um, like come from a company and then like it has also a category. So we like to include that. And then in the details page, we can do the same thing. But sometimes, um, yeah, I think this is cool. This is good to go. But sometimes we like to know the sales on a product. We like to know the sales status of a product. So I think we need to go to the um, product yeah, here. Yeah, we are seeing that product belongs to company, all this. But then we can have um, product has many sales, right? Um, product to people can buy product. But then it is only coming through order. So what we can do is that we can see um, product has many um, sales, but through something, right? Let me see. Uh -huh. Right. Through. And then it's through what? Through order, right? So we've added that relationship here. So a product will have so many sales, right? So we can check all the sales. Um, sorry, product has many, uh, no, it has many orders, right? Orders, not sales, we don't have, uh, it has orders, um, it has company, it has this, right? Oh, we did not add a sales, so, mm -hmm. but <laughs> I thought we added the sale. <laughs> so we can add the orders to it. Right. Can add the order so just the um for thinking too much. <laughs> Alright, so let's check one product and see what is coming from here. Great, so we can go product. Right, and then let me hit this. This some red on the line, so what I, I don't know. Right. Let's go to first product and see if we are going to see all the sales on that product. Sorry, the orders on that product. All the orders, right? Right, I'm so sorry for that, right? Yeah, in terms of uh, come, all right, sorry. We just company, not company. We don't have company, company. Light like include company. This is where that error is coming from. And then we need to go to the product.rb and then we see it has a company, right? It belongs to company, right? And then Let's hit enter.
Perfect, it's coming. Can you see that it's loading, right? Yay! We've added the product itself, and then we've added the category, the orders, and then the company to it. And with this, we can just tap into anything from this product, right? Great. And then you can go ahead and do the same thing for the um, for the company, right? The company is having a lot of product. So um, I think we do not need to. Company is having a lot of product. And then we can do this. And then we can do the same thing for the category, right? And then, yeah. My bad. All right. And we are good to go from here. Great. So thank you so much. I think you've seen that this is working and everything is working as expected, right? <clears throat> we can go ahead and test all this and to see all things you grow. All right. This is cool, but the last thing we need to do is to add author. All right, so we got our app running. We're fine. It is tested. It's working fine. But um, we like to add some authorization rules to the application because if you look at this what, what we said is that only the admin Kelvin who is the owner of this application can create a product <laughs> even if you log in and you are a user you cannot create a product right and then if you go anyone um, who looks uh, like who go to the website can view all the product out there the product out there but if you want to create an order if you want to create an order then you should be authenticated before you are able to do that. That's one of the rules that we would like to set. And then if you log in as a user and then you create an order, you should be able to see only the order you created. You don't, you cannot see the other others created. It's not just good, right? And then you should not be able to list, like see all the list of orders, right? Right? Is that okay? So this is what we're going to create. And then Rails is saying that to do that, um, there are several gems that we could use. But for now, the one I'm going to work with is called Can 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 Gem, right? So Can Can Can, what it does is that it allows us to add authorization rules to our Ruby on Rails application. And then um, they're saying that you can read around it. But let's go ahead and then install the gem here into our gem file. And then go to gem file. And then you want to add the can, can, can job, right? And then we do bundle, bundle, right? So whilst it's installing, let's look, right? The next one is to generate ability. So they are saying the ability is just going to generate a file where we can create our rules, where we can write our rules, right? And then let me see if this guy is finished. Yeah, so great, let's generate the rules yeah. right and then what are the rules that we can generate the rules is saying that we can define some rules for a user if I come in and I log in as a user like what should I be able to do that's one and then the other second one is that what if I am not logging what can I do right okay what if I am an admin user what can I do right and this is what we're gonna do here right right and then We we have the rules ability file generated for us. Great, great. So, um, what do we do, right? What do we do? Okay. Okay, so what can we do, right? Let me delete this file and then all right. All right. so this is the rule. Like if you look at this place, they are defining a read access. Like if someone is a user, if someone can have not login, right? What can he do? 
then he can read others. So let's just copy this guy. And then like um, we can do this over here. So for products, it is public. Anyone can read it, right? Yeah, so. But before that, I would like to generate a user. Who is a user, right? So we can see that user uh, in rules, we just say that if there's no user, just create one, right? It's just going to be user dot new, just rules convention. So if there's no user in the system, just create one for a guest user. So anyone can just read, yeah, you see, for guest users, we are just seeing that they are users, like they are new, right? So the product, anyone can read a product, right? That's the first one. How about um, the, the all this? You remember we talked about the all this? That if you are a user and you created an order, then you can view it. But you can't create it. So we can, you can create, you can delete that. What are we, right? Okay, so we can say if user dot, there's um, something called persistent, right? If there's a user, I don't want trouble. Keep going. All right. If there's a user there, like, what do we want to do? So, um, you know, this thing is just causing confusions over here. It's just sticking. <laughs> All right. Great. If user dot um, look at what I'm doing. This thing is just so bad. Yeah. So if there's a user, then we are going to see that. My goodness. A user can create an order, right? A user can create an order. And then that user can read an order. But he can read that. Can he read all orders? No. He can read only orders where the user ID. Is that uh, this uh, the user's ID? So if the user ID or the user attached to the um, all this is the user who is logged in, then he can read that order. If not, then he cannot read it, right? And then the last one is that we need to give uh, the admin user all the rules. Then in rules, um, can 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 is saying that we can do that. We can say can. Then what can he do? He can manage. Um, then you see, oh, so he can do everything, everything, he can do everything, he can create, delete, update, destroy, whatever, if, what, user, the rule is equal to admin, right, so if the user's rule is equal to admin, then he can do everything on the screen, but if the user is not logged in, then he can read product, all the product, right? If the user is not, um, if the user exists, he can just create, like, he can create others, but he can only um, create others. He can only read the others which he created, right? And then this guy, like, if he's, you are an admin, then you can manage everything. Product has company, so let me do this so come p miss then the cat go is right then we like to do this so it means that those staff company categories whatever they are public everyone who come there can read it right great this is cool but i think you can see that we are calling admin user but we've not set an admin user in application right yeah so who is an admin user um, do you remember the one we were creating the user model? We added a rule to it and we did not finish that. So let's go ahead and finish that user model thing. And then, yay, we've not added anything to the user model. So I'm going to this place and then um, there's something we need to do, right? First of all, we need to define the user rule, right? So we can see enum, all right? And, right? and then what are the rules 
that we can have and in our database we are going to have that role to be it's going to be sorry it's going to be user and then admin right these are just the uh, roles that we are going to accept inside our application so enum role is just going to be all right yeah i'm sorry i'm sorry right so these are the roles that we like to set and then from there what we do is that whenever we create a user whenever we create a user let's assume that we do not assign the user any role what should that user do and we need to write this guy here uh we wrote um an example but then let me do uh, okay All right so we can define something called set default um, rule, right? And then what set default rule is going to be that uh, if we initialize a rule, right? The user, and VS Code is just abnormal. So if we initialize a new user, we can say self the rule. If it is set, then we would like, let, um, let's say that what is set. If it is not set, we just make it user. So if you are coming in and then you, you don't have a role, we automatically see that you are a user. But if you are coming in and you have a role, then we assign you that role that you came up with. And I think we can, we have to do this, right? We have to call this method like set before role after we initialize a new user, right? Let me put it here. So after initialize, we just set a new user if the record is new, right? So. With this, um, I yes, good to meet, right, and then yeah, you know it's freezing. It's freezing. And then you pick up and look at what it's doing. Right. <laughs> so, so, just so bad. Don't worry. Um, R Ruby don't care about indentation so much. It's not like. Um, Python where the indentation, Python or PHP where the indentation matters, indentation not matter, so don't worry. I just need to fix this later, right? But we've added the user role, user can be a user or admin, and then we are seeing that when we set a new user, like we save a new user into a database, and he's not coming with a role, we want to assign him as a user, right? If it's coming as a user, like some role, they would like to set the role that the user is coming up with, right? And we do this once we initialize a new user in our application. And with this command, uh, we are good to go to run this and check if a new a user is an admin, and then we can allow him to manage everything in our database, right? Cool. Let's go to the documentation. And they are saying that there's still some things that we need to do. Mm. Right. What we need to do is that in the controllers, we need to tell the controllers. To respond to these rules right and they are saying that there's an authorized helper method and that helper method what it does is that it allows us to enforce the authorization rule on that controller action and they are giving us this authorized and if you look at this place they are saying that the shoe we would like to authorize like the read of the shoe right so let's go here yeah let's go to um, product and you can see that um, when someone wants to access this product for the index show everyone can access it but for the create update destroy then the user needs to be updated before like sorry authenticated before so we like to see before action we like to authenticate um, users right and then we see not for all, but it's only only what um, um, and then only I think create update and destroy. So it means that if you want to access the index, you don't need to authenticate it. If you want to access the show, you don't need to authenticate it. But talk about create, update, destroy. Hey. You have to be authenticated before, right? Then for those um, create, update, destroy, we like to add the rule, right? this authorization rule. So 
what are we going to authorize? You authorize the no. my bad. We authorize the create action, and then we are authorizing the product. Right? So all we are saying is that whenever we want to create something, then we just want to see that is that user having the role to do that. Mm. If he's having the role, then go ahead. If it's not, then don't allow him. Right. And we would like to do the same thing for updates. So the method we are trying to go about is the uh, create, but we can just leave it like this and we will have no issues because if the user cannot create it, he cannot update it. Uh, sorry, yeah. So for the destroy tool, we can just see we are authorizing the destroy method, all right, on the product, all right? And this should be good to go. Let me add all the rules and later we can check up, right? So we have, we've added the rules for this product and said that only the admin user can create a product, but anyone can read a product, right? The last thing that we like to touch on is the order, right, the order. And for the other two, um, we want to set the before action to authenticate user, but for that one, it's just going to be everything. Nobody can just go to the others and then just do something. No, we we'll like to set the before action to authenticate users for all, for anything that has to do with orders. Okay. Great. Cool. And then from here, we would like to also tell the others that, hey, before you read an order, we would like to make sure that you have that authority, right? You have to make sure, we would like to make sure that we have, you have that right, right? So let's see, we authorize read for others, right? And the same thing can be done here. We authorize read for others. So who can read an order? It's only the, order, um, the user who created it or it's only the admin user, right? And that is good to go. And then for create, um, anyone can create an order. For update, if you created an order, then you can update it. And then for destroy, yeah, we don't care about this. So this is all we need to do to enforce the authorization rules in application, right? All right, the next part of this whole thing is to uh, real assess. Let's try to see if we can test this application to see what is working and what is not working, right? Okay, so let me close all of these. Great, so um, let's go to um, all this first. Do you remember that? We set some rules for the orders, right? All this. Initially, anyone, anyone could view the orders. But for now, let me take away this authorization and then let's hit orders and see if we get the access. Yay! Undefined method, orders, controller. Do you mean authenticate user? All right. That's authenticate user. Yeah. Then, that's Oh, yay, sorry. Yeah, just an error. Authentic, not user, but user. Mm -hmm. So we go back to the orders oh, once again. Cool, and then we hit this. Let's wait and see what happens. We are seeing that if you are not authenticated, would like wouldn't like to you to see the order, right? Let's see if it is working. Great. You need to sign in before continuing, right? You need to sign in. So let's try signing in. But we are not going to sign in as a user who um um is um, it's an admin, so let's go to sign up here. I think we we sign up a user called test user. I don't know if this is working, so let's try sign up that user. Oh, so this user is not um, correct. So um, 
I like to just create a user. So let's say name is um, test user user and then address is America. all right right so let's go to sign up let's sign up this user and use him to test how right great this user has been signed up successfully um i like to copy the bearer to him here and then let's go to where we are calling the orders now remember that this user that we sorry this user that we created is a normal user right he just responds yeah can you see that uh, we did not lock his role. Uh, yeah. Why not lock that user role? Uh, I like to do that. Right. Yeah. So I'm coming to. Uh, let me go to the um, user serializer. Uh, serial, okay. User serializer. Yeah. I like to like lock the uh, um, role when we sign up them. Right. Right. So. Let me log in with that user details and then let's see. I just want you to know the user log in. Uh, great. Can you see this? This user is just a normal user. He's logging, but his role is just user, right? And then let's copy his um, bearer token. Right? Let's see. Let's copy his bearer token. And then we go to where we were calling the others. And then go to bearer paste this token, right? And then we what we want to do is that we like to send all this, right? And then see that um, if it's working. Can you see this? There's an error. Uninitialized constant ability. Can we draw that? Public true, right? Public true. Can we draw that? Right? That's wrong. Ability saying that. Can we read product, not product, right? You come in. Meba. All right, so I made a mistake here. It should not be product. That's why we are complaining. They're saying uninitialized contact product, right? So we need to update this. It should be singular, right? So it should be product, company, then category, right? Great, I think that's all. Sure. Then let's hit enter again. And then let's see. Remember, this is just a normal user, someone who is just a user. And then let's see if he can read all this, right? All this. And we already have the error here. Can you see this? Can, can, can. Access denied. You are not authorized to access this page. You are not authorized to access this page. Although it's loading. But this is the error message we are receiving. And we would like to, like, let's go to the can 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 gym. And then if someone is not authorized, we like to just show the person that, hey, you are not authorized. And I think there's a, let's go to the developer guide. And then there's the access denied thing here. Access denied. Where can you see that? Uh, my eyes. All right, hey, this is it. Handle access denied. And they are saying that um, to handle access denied, we can just do this. Rescue from can, can, can access denied exception. And then we can render some message over here. So let me just copy and paste. And then let's paste it there and see that 
when someone is not authorized, we like to show that user some uh, message, right? And then access denied. Yay! This is working. All right, now so let's go to the application controller, and then <laughs> this cannot be read. It's not readable. So I just copied and paste from here, um, and then we do in this. Remember the user we are testing out with is authenticated, but this user is getting access denied, right? Is getting access denied. The reason is that we set up the authorization rule to check out that if you are accessing something, do you have the right? Yay! Access denied, right? Let's go to order slash one, two, and see that this user did not create the order. He's trying to access it. Will we allow him access denied? And whilst we are here, I would like to also test the product, right? I'd like to also test the product to see that if uh, someone who just logged in, can he create a product, right? This is the things that we need for a product, a name, image, description, company, company, category, right? Let's try to see if this user can create a product, right? Need very, oh, let's go to off. Uh, no verification key available, right? Yeah, you're right. So let me go log in. Like I think um, we need to create, um, copy this verification because this verification has expired. And let's do this. Yay, can you see this? The verification is just from the login user. Initially, I was just copying the wrong verification. But look, access denied for this user also. He cannot create a product. He cannot access the orders, right? because he's not authorized to do that. Okay, and then, um, let's assume, let's create, um, create a user and assign him to be a, um, an admin to check if everything is going to work. But before that, I think we need to go to the application controller again, and then I'd like to add the rule to this, right? Rule so that we can add the rule when creating a new user. Yeah, can add the rule when, when sign up a user, right? So let's see for the sign up. Sign up. Oops. Sign up, right? And then let's see. At main at mail dot com, and then let's see his name is test at main, right? And then his alright, his address is set to test address, right? And then his role is set to admin, right? And then we are going to sign up. Oh, you know what? First of all, let me log out. That it's working, but please let me log out because I was having issues. When I don't log out, one user. And I tried creating a new user, it, it was um, just picking up the old user credential. So let me hit log out. It is a complaint, but it just log out successfully. Right, so this is the admin user who was created. And then let me just log in with his credential. So log in, right? Great, the response is great. Can you see this? His role is an admin. Let me copy his bearer to him. Right? And let's go to the product, right? The same product, and I'm just updating the product, bear to him, we go body. The same product the old user was creating where he was denied. This user is an admin. Let's hit enter and see what happens. Boom, the product is created. Can you see this? Why? Because he's authorized to do that. All right, let's go to the others, right? Remember that when this user was trying to um, let me copy the bearer token here. This is the same bearer token for the authenticated user. When this user was trying to assess all this, right? All the orders, he was denied, right? But let's look at what happens. Let's look at what happened. Boom! Everything is coming, right? Slash one. Why? Because this user is an admin. And then the authorization rules we wrote, they are working. That's why 
is happening in this way. Great. So you can see that we've been able to create our entities, authorization rules, authentication, things are working so fine. Right. This is good. Right. I'm so glad we've been able to reach out, reach this uh, level. Right. Great. So let me have some good comments message here. And I think we are almost done with everything. The last thing that I would like to do is that let's um, write some testing, right? We may not be able to write integration tests for this application, but um, I like to focus on um, controller testing, at least something simple, right? To make sure that we understand what we're doing. And then let's say um, authorization, right? All right. Right, so let me close everything, right? Close all. Cool. And then um, we like to write testing, right? Testing with RSP. RSP, right? Um, by default, we have the testing folder here, um, right? By default, we got the testing folder here inside. Um, test, yay! We have all these testing folders, right? And then um yeah but we will like to test our whole thing not with um this guy but then we like to test with RSP, right so let's see if um we can do that now so where we go All right, so we are on the RSpec documentation page and we like to get up and running testing application. We are only going to be concerned about the model, at least for now, and then later we'll talk about the rest. So they are seeing that we should have this to development test and then let's go to gem file, All right? And then let's go to development test as the here, over here. And then let's add this and then let's do clear and uh, and then from here all we do is that you are seeing that we say mandolin install great then we run this command rspec install great and then from there we can generate the um we already have the models so we generate the rspec spec file and then write our spec inside it so um, I'm not going to be so much concerned about this, so we can just paste this here. It's going, going to generate the, the setup files we need to run um, specific, um, like testing, right? So we generated a dot .spec file, which does require the RSpec helper. Then it generated the spec folder where we are going to store our spec files. And then this is just going to be some configurations we're going to use and then uh, yeah, these files here are desperately different. So we don't have any much problem. So to test a file, right, we need to run the RSP um, generator to generate a spec file. Now, let's try running this for the user model to see what we have for us. Great, it generated a spec file for the user model. And this is the file, right? It generated a spec file for the user. So it just added RSpec, generate, then it just going to generate an RSpec spec file for the model. We are good to go, right? Then we write all our tests here, right? All our tests here. But, but um, there's a gem that helps um, writing tests easily, right? There's a gem that helps us to write test easily. And I'd like to show you that test, uh, that gem. It's called Shida Marcher, Shida Marchers. And um, that 
jam is just incredible. It just help us to write text without so much pain, right? So, I'm coming. 